Hello everyone. So we have finally gotten to the telos of our course and we have arrived at the Atomus, the ancient Atomus, uh, that are Leucippus and Democritus. Now the Atomus tradition, as you all very well know, given that you're all from the sciences, well, most of you, um, has had a very, very strong influence on, on modern times. But um, it's not a direct influence. You know, a lot of these ancient works were lost, forgotten, uh, suppressed mostly, you know, I think more than lost and forgotten, suppressed by authorities because they went against the grain to some extent. And so what we have, uh, what, what happened was in the, in the Renaissance, there was, a, there was a revival, there was a revival of these things. So for example, Pierre Gassendi uh, was extremely influenced by the, uh, by the atomists and especially by Lucretius, who is um, the last of these, um, you know, Greek and Roman atomists and, and the, that we sort of uh, know of and we have a long text of. And actually, he's the one from whom we have a long text. And he is much further than Leucippus and Democritus. So Leucippus and Democritus, we're looking at 5th century BC and uh, early 5th century BC, that is. And with Lucretius, uh, Titus Lucretius Carus, uh, we are looking at 1st uh, century BC. Uh, and Rome, we have moved from Greece to Rome. Uh, so um, there is an atomist tradition really, you know, an ancient atomist tradition that uh, to us because of the, our lack of text really seems to us to, to come back after a couple of hundred years almost. So you have uh, fifth century BC, you know, you have uh, Leucippus and Democritus. Then in the fourth century BC, um, well, 4th, 3rd century BC, 4th century BC mostly, you have uh, the Hellenist Epicurus, extremely famous, and you've heard the word Epicurean. Well, he is, you know, also uh, very famous for uh, being one of the ancient atomists. And then you have, um, well, my favorite of the lot, probably because he wrote such a beautiful poem, uh, that is Titus Lucretius Carus, um, who was a Roman citizen and um, wrote in Latin, uh, who wrote De Rerum Natura, of the nature of things. And this is one of the most sort of beautiful poems on atomism that you, um, I mean, beautiful poems of ancient times you'd find. And that's, uh, that is one of the biggest accounts of ancient atomism that we have. So, um, but in this um, sort of, you know, whatever 90 minutes we have per week, uh, so uh, we'll um, basically look at the ancient atomists because we're looking at the pre-Socratics and the term pre-Socratics now we are really stretching it a bit because I think Democritus was perhaps uh, one year older than Socrates and died after Socrates. So, you know, is, is, is um, contemporary of Socrates. Uh, Leucippus is slightly older, but you know, um, nevertheless, um, not, mu not much older. So we are now pretty much contemporaries of Socrates. So we are saying pre-Socratic, it's, you know, uh, greater than equal to Socrates, sort of an idea. Um, so who are these people? So Leucippus, we don't really have that much from, we have just one extant, extant fragment where he, said some, he says something like, uh, nothing comes to be at random, but all things for a reason and of necessity, a complicated fragment. And it will lead us to think about chance and necessity, which I'll also do a short video on that we talked about in with Empedocles, but you know, we'll talk about this again with the atomists. Um, he was um, supposed to be, he's more famous actually for being the teacher of Democritus rather than, you know, uh, and the founder of atomis, uh, of, of atomism, ancient atomism. Uh, he was one of the earliest, well, we know, to develop um, the theory of atomism. We don't know where he's from. Some say he's from Miletus, some say he's from Ilia, some say he's from Abdera. So he could be from any of these places, it's not very clear. And a lot of the, uh, there are reasons for ascribing these places. So one would say, if Ilia would say that he is uh, in the Parmenidian tradition, from Miletus would say he's in the Ionian tradition, and Abdera, because because he's a teacher of, Leucippus, uh, of Democritus, sorry. So, so we don't really know where he's from. 
uh, he has, but, but these things give us this clear idea, and also you know, his, his philosophy, that he had an Ionian sort of outlook, this, this Milesian kind of an outlook, to understand, uh, to understand and explain the physical world and physical phenomena. But he was also very, very well versed in um, Eleatic philosophy. And so a lot of his theory, like we saw with Empedocles and Anaxagoras, is facing the challenge of the Eleatics, facing the challenge posed by Parmenides, Zeno, and uh, Melissus as well, who, is, who we haven't talked about, but who uh, was after Zeno and before Leucippus, right? Um, he um, founded this uh, school in Abdera, is what we believe, where he taught uh, Democritus. He wrote, uh, well, we have um, names of two, uh, two works that he wrote, and you'll be happy this, now we are moving away from Peripusios to Homegas Diakolos. Um, Dia, sorry, Omega Diacosmos. Why am I saying Diacolos? Uh, Diacosmos, right? So, which means the great um, cosmic system, the great cosmology, or the, the, uh, the great world system. That's one way of describing it, the great world system. Uh, another work that he apparently wrote was called On Mind, and that might have been a critique of Anaxagoras' um, theory of mind, of nuance, uh, but we don't have actually anything extant from either of these works. Um, uh, now, we, when we talk about Leucippus and Democritus, we are going to, um, I mean, there have been attempts by scholars to separate the, the ideas of the two. Okay, this was said by Leucippus and this was probably expanded by Democritus. Um, but they're, they're, these are really fine tuning things that you know, in, in our class at this level, it's pretty difficult to go into. So I'll treat Leucippus and Democritus as one block for the most part, you know, apart from this extant fragment, which we'll uh, discuss, but generally we'll treat them as as uh, one block, and uh, you can imagine that uh, if, if you want to have a separation, you can think of Leucippus as having come up with notions and Democritus as having expanded them. Well, Democritus, who was a student, was um, from Abdera in Thrace, so we are looking at um, sort of northern Greece. Um, at that time, it was also part of Ionia. It was an Ionian colony, so not very far from Anatolia, Turkey, if you look at it geographically. Uh, the dates we have are from about 470 to, uh, 460 to uh, 370 BC, so you know, 90 years around that time he lived. Um, he was, so you've heard of the weeping philosopher, the sort of sad, obscure philosopher, which is um, Heraclitus. This one is a laughing philosopher, right? He was called the laughing philosopher. He was was supposed to have traveled really, really widely. So he went to different places to study. So for, for example, he's supposed to have gone to Egypt to study geometry. He's supposed to have gone to Persia, to Babylon, to Ethiopia. There are even some claims that he came all the way to India to meet the gymnosophists, so the, the um, naked philosophers, the naked uh, wise people, maybe the Jains, I don't know. So he is um, very, very widely traveled. Um, and um, you can see he was one of the most prolific ancient writers that we know of. Uh, we, have, we are very, very unfortunate in not having any of his whole texts extant, like we have with Plato, for example. Uh, we have, however, you know, just to tease us and to make us feel sad about you know, the course of history, we have a list of titles. So we have about 60 works, at least over 60 works, attested to him by Diogenes Laertes, in which uh, some are, and they're on all kinds of themes. They're on everything from ethical. Ethics is actually from which we have most extant fragments, so ethical, uh, on physics and nature, mathematics, on music, on linguistics, on technical subjects, on cosmology, astronomy, geography, I don't know, I, I don't even have this list, on uh, physiology, the body, medicine, on sensation, on epistemology, on poetry, on um, on agriculture, on painting, right? So he was, he was sort of, you know, this um, pre-Renaissance, Renaissance man. Well, he was like, like Aristotle, I suppose, who was supposed to have a, what was it? Um, um, ore in every water and uh, something, foot in every boat, I forgot. Uh, so, so Democritus definitely also did have that, except we, we are very unfortunate to not have any of his works. And um, he, um, and, and you can see this, Sort of, you know, um, perhaps through this wide traveling and wide thinking, you know, he, he developed a very, very subtle and complex um, theory, which, uh, which is something that has influenced people 
since then, so you know, we know Leucippus and Democritus and the, the, these theories which influenced uh, the Ep Epicurus and the Epicureans. So this big Hellenist philosophy which had an influence on, on sort of the rest of European history actually. So you have the influence there and then you have the influence, well, through history, you know, I mentioned sort of on, and, and on philosophers and on um, on physicists, mathematicians, you know, so, so this, this atomism, you can see the influence since then and up to now, you know, even Gilles Deleuze uh, would be sort of said to have, and, and for example, Marx before, he wrote his thesis on uh, the difference between Democritian and Epicurean philosophies of nature. So, 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 you know, even he, when he was doing his PhD, let's say, um, he was looking at, um, at, at, at exactly these thinkers and of all of them he picked the atomists to, to consider. Um, so there is a lot to be said for the atomists and uh, in this I'm doing a short introduction because we'll go into the details of the theory but I really would like to read you know um, a, a really small section from uh, Lucretius so the, Ro uh, the, the Roman poet uh, he wrote in Latin and uh, this is first century BC um, but um, this will give you an idea of the kind of um, imagination that the atomist sort of drew forth because this this uh, I mean I would I would definitely consider Democritus an indirect if not a direct influence on Lucretius 400 years later so he's talking about something which you know later was thought of as Brownian motion so he says consider sunbeams when the sun's rays um, let in pass through the darkness of a shuttered room you will see a multitude of tiny bodies all mingling in a multitude of ways inside the sunbeam, moving in the void, seeming to be engaged in endless strife, battle and warfare, troop attacking troop, and never, resp and never a respite, harried constantly, with meetings and with partings everywhere. From this you can imagine what it is for atoms to be tossed perpetually in endless motion through the mighty void. To some extent, a small thing may afford an image of great things, a footprint of a concept. And, and I think, you know, apart from uh, being an introduction to ancient atomism, and I think this, this could be put in like every single sort of epigraph of like every book on atomism, consider sunbeams and, and look at the movement of uh, movement in there of tiny particles that you can't see and look at the random motion in there that, that seem to be constantly moving. And, and then the idea that a small thing may afford an image of great things, a footprint of a concept. I mean, it, it sort of could be put in, you know, any kind of history of ancient philosophy. You know, what what have we had through this whole series of lectures? We've had these little, these these tiny little fragments. Sometimes, you know, less than fragments from which we have, you know, we have we really have, we are really tracing footprints. You know, this whole course, what we have been doing is we are trying to find these these little footprints, these little traces, and from these traces, we have been trying to construct these concepts and to see how these concepts, you know, were born and had this great traction in the history of ideas. So, um, so this is what I would say, you know, to end this introduction to this last sort of uh, week's videos, consider sunbeams. Thank you.